Hi guys, I'm Dale and I want to talk about something that's very dear to my heart and that's uncovering the book within and the question is do you go solo or do you collaborate? So I'm sure many of us have a story, experiences, you know, all kind of stuff inside us that we are dying to get out. You may even have been told that you have to write a book and you're thinking, oh no, I don't know what to do. Do I start on my own? Where do I start? How do I finish? What do I do in between? So there's all kinds of questions that that come up and often we find ourselves at that crossroads of do we do it? Don't we do it? Do we do it with someone or do we go so or do we do a, a little bit of a of a combination? So I've been helping people to write books for over 13 years and I've worked in all kinds of, of combinations of offering one-off sessions to staying with somebody for the whole, you know, for the, for the duration. So, you know, th there's some great things about doing it solo. I tend to do most of my book writing solo. You know, if I need an editor, I'll I'll outsource it. If I need a, a, a book cover, I'll outsource it. So I don't do everything myself. But, you know, if you go solo, you have complete creative control and you know every word you write every sentence every part of your book is entirely your own it's not influenced by anyone else and you can shape it in just the way that you want so the only thing I will say to that is hopefully you will plan it first um I work with non-fiction books my mum writes a lot of fiction I'm going to call it factional because it's actually based on her life but she fluffs it up quite a lot and she pants everything I'm like how could you do that I like to plan so I've always been a planner but you do get complete creative control over your entire book so it's it's great for that flexible schedule you don't have to turn up to any meetings you do it when you like but here's the thing, you may end up procrastinating, you may end up um, going shopping, going to lunch with your friends, doing something else. So that's kind of like the downside of it. But the other side is if you wake up at two o'clock in the morning, and you think, ha ha, I have a spark of inspiration, you can go and do it yourself. The other thing I think you get from a solo journey, it, it might be a big um personal growth journey but it might be a baptism of fire but you know the great thing is is we all learn by making mistakes and you'll make mistakes and you know you've just got to learn how to do everything all the tech you know interior design maybe cover design how to upload it but once you've done it once you know how to do it and you know you've made a few mistakes on the way you'll know how to you'll know how to do it Going it solo is cost effective. I'm not going to say it's completely free because, you know, you are using your time and you may want to get proofreaders or editors or book, book cover designers. Um, yeah, entirely up to you, really. But it is more cost effective if you are dedicated to the task. You plan it, you get it done and you get it published. If you don't, then, you know, you've used a lot of your time, but maybe you could you could use on something else. A couple of other downsides, you might have a lot of, of self-doubt. Um, not everyone needs external validation, but sometimes it's it's good to have, especially when you have those moments of, do people really want to read this? The other thing when you're going alone, you have no accountability. Unless you get your mum or your dog or your cat or your budgie to hold you accountable, you may slow down a bit and you may do that lovely thing called procrastination. Um, the other thing is, is limited perspective. So when you do it on your own, it's only what's in your head that comes out. So sometimes you may end up with a, nar a, a narrower vision. What I often find when I'm working with people is they might come to me with an outline, but it lacks, I'm going to call it spark. So it lacks a bit of, of sparkle. So, you know, we can do some brainstorming and you'll end up with 
Is it better? I hope so. Um, isolation, writing can be lonely if you haven't got anybody to kind of bounce ideas off. Um, I actually quite like the process of sitting writing by myself, but I tend to leave lo lots of big periods of reflection. I'll write several books at the same time. But I think, is it contiguously or continuously or something like that? But I have lots of projects on the go because I like to leave things and reflect and then come back and see it with with fresh eyes and then I'll pick the one that has the priority to go I don't think I got that word right so we'll ignore that last word so when you've got a collaborative approach you've got I'm going to call it guided discovery so you know as a coach we ask questions we probe we'll explore and we'll help somebody to discover connections that they didn't know existed and, and it's and it's also about bringing that unique vision in into focus accountability if you've got a meeting and you've got to do something chances are you're going to do it you know what's the point of turning up to a, a session about your book and you've done nothing so we've talked about that perspective you get expanded perspective Skill development. So again, one of the things that a writing coach can do is help you to hone your writing and create suggestions and techniques that you can use to, to get a, a, a better book. And then there's those, I can't do this blocks. And so, you know, we're here, there to kind of hold your hand, guide you through, tell that you can do it. And, and support you when you have those horrible moments of you know nobody loves me everybody hates me think I'll go and eat some worms so you know it's it's great when you have um when you have somebody there who's who's going to help you to get through that stuff now that doesn't mean that it's not going to come with I, I don't think I'd, I quite like the word conflict, but conflict shows us that there's there's space for growth. So, you know, we not everyone sees eye to eye. So, um, you know, you have to set those expectations right at the front to say, well, you know, where do we go with it? And at the end of the day, it's your book, it's your vision. And um, as long as you know how we sort out how we sort out disagreements up front everything's going to be okay um so what happens when you have a good collaborator is they have two of these and one of those two two big ears and they spend time listening but it's it's a deep listening it's an intuitive listening so what I often do is when somebody is talking to me about their their books or their ideas, I have, I'm scribbling over here, but my mind is also exploring things. And then I like to take some time to reflect on what I've heard, but I'm noticing you, your emotions, your words, your energy and all that kind of stuff. So I'm not just listening to what's coming out of here. I'm kind of feeling everything. And I can see then things in patterns and pictures. You're going to get asked great questions. Um, often we don't dig deep enough into our own ideas. I mean, that's why when I write, I like lots of reflection time because when I leave it, lots of ideas come in. But when you work with somebody else, they ask you loads of questions that get you thinking. Gentle guidance, constructive feedback, that emotional support. So the book is inside of you. A collaborator helps you get it out. So I'm going to give you a little bit of an exercise before I go. This is called the five moments exercise. So you need about 20 to 30 minutes. You need a a pen and paper, or you can do it in a in a word document or whatever your preferred word processor is. And the way to start is to close your eyes, feet firmly on the ground, and when I say imagine, you can sense, feel, know, whatever. So imagine roots are growing from your feet right into the center of the earth and connecting to something really beautiful and lovely. I always see a crystal. 
and you just drink the energy in and bring that into your solar plexus and just take a few deep breaths and just ground and center yourself and then let your mind wander over your life and 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 try to identify five significant moments or experiences that have shaped you today now the important thing about this is if you take that time to breathe and ground and center and ask yourself that question just write down the first five things that come into your head don't spend loads of time go well I wonder if it's that time when just allow your unconscious mind to chuck stuff forward you can change it later personal triumphs challenging obstacles moments of profound realization you know get those amazing ahas when you've been on some kind of a journey experiences that have changed your perspective and encounters things that have inspired you so write down these five moments just scribble don't worry about perfect anything just scribble And then after you've written them, read through and ask yourself, are there any common themes? Now, let's just go back a moment. When I ask you to spend a couple of minutes, you might want to do a mind map. So draw a circle, uh, you know, and mind map each of those and then spend a couple of of minutes writing on them. Because mind mapping, if you like that kind of thing, is really, really um, powerful. So any common themes? Oh, any lessons that you learn? Think about those moments that have influenced your belief or or approach to life or anything like that that's kind of changed something really big. And if you could share one message from these experiences, what would it be? Now, the key thing here, here is, because we're only doing like 20 or 30 minutes, is to not worry and not get into that oh my god what if I don't don't choose the first five mo- you know the right five moments it truly doesn't matter this is an exercise to start you thinking and then write a paragraph summarizing what you've discovered through the exercise so what hopefully what will happen is you'll find core themes core messages that might be the foundation of your book but you know this is um This is just one of many things you can do to kind of discover the book inside of you. So I'm going to leave you with this. Your story matters, your experiences, insights, perspective. They're all unique. They're all valuable. You know, whether you want to write alone or with a collaborator, the most important thing is you start to get your ideas down on paper. And then I'm going to finish with one final question. How much do I want to share my inspirational message? How can my story help other people? And how how will this book, or how will, you know, writing and publishing this book help me to build my my personal professional, I can't even speak now, professional brand. So answer the questions and hopefully that will inspire and motivate you. And, you know, you can come and find me on dalediley.com if you want to go down the collaborative approach and that can be one session that could be 20 sessions that is entirely up to you there is no one size that fits all um you know if you're naturally motivated have a clear vision enjoy working independently then you know going solo is going to be absolutely perfect for you um if you find that you struggle need accountability you know lose your motivation and inspiration then working with someone's probably going to help you so your book is waiting for you let's get it out